Throw your diamonds in the sky if you feel the vibe. What's up guys, Super Mike Diamonds and welcome to the video. In the month of January, you guys can only imagine the number of questions I've gotten over this month. And I can understand them because the same questions I have, it's the same myths I used to believe in. So I decided why not make a video where I discuss at least the five common gym mistakes that are making you fatter or the five myths that you believe in that are detrimental to your fitness journey. So I think this video will be helpful. Smash it with a thumbs up if you think it was. But let's kick off with the video, five gym mistakes that are making you fatter. Yo. Let's kick it off with gym mistake number five, doing crunches for six pack abs. But I think it's most appropriate to talk about this in the gym. So the workouts you guys just saw now are some of my favorite ab workouts. And the gym myth number five that I get a lot, every day someone comes up to me and is like, Mike, I train my abs every single day, but I see no results in terms of my abs. I maybe see my upper two abs or the upper four, but the lower ones I don't see. And I was that guy. I was training abs every day, doing all the crazy workouts you can imagine. It took me very long to realize, for me to see my full six pack abs, I need to be in check with my diet and that's where the whole 70% in the kitchen, 30% in the gym. You don't need to train your abs every single day. What you do need to focus on is your diet to be able to see your abs. So it's like any other muscle, you train your abs to develop them and that's why I think my abs are so blocky from training them all that time. But for you to actually reveal them, you reveal them in the kitchen. So that's gym mistake number five. Let's go for number four which correlates with the diet. in terms of gym mistakes is the diet hack. There's so many diet myths that I've heard, things that can be detrimental to your diet. It's really calories in versus calories out. So what I'm rather going to do is finish my grocery shopping here and kill all the diet myths that you've probably heard and that are probably killing your gains. So let's talk about diet hacks or diet myths. Number one, what I get a lot is, Mike, am I allowed to eat carbohydrates after 6 p.m.? The short answer is yes. Your body doesn't know what time it is, but it does know that you do need to consume amounts of calories within 24 hours. And imagine if you do that every single day, you're going to end up in a caloric deficit or surplus depending on your goals. So it doesn't matter when you eat the food, it's completely up to you. So people will always ask me, Mike, I can't eat enough calories, I'm not in a caloric surplus, I can't gain muscle. In this cups of cashew, there's 900 calories. This can get you into a surplus. Another thing is like my protein's expensive. I can't get my protein intake in. Another thing is look, this is tuna which is awesome. It is natural protein that you can get. But another thing that is cheaper and you can get more protein and bang for your buck is a whey protein and that's why I partner with my protein because they're far cheaper than any of the others. And also say you want to lose weight. Something that you can do Say example, you like drinking sodas, take the zero calorie, you save yourself the calories. And look at this for example, in one milliliter of oil, it's nine calories. You can use a one calorie spray and save yourself nine calories every single time. So the main idea is calories in versus calories out. The rest doesn't matter depending on your goals, but let's move on to topic number three. Jimmy. 
2018 motivation. We're trying to get this work this year, bro. Train twice, even three times a day so we can get them results. Yes. <laughs> I'm joking, guys. When I trained in the beginning and I had the time, I used to train twice a day. Thinking that it was gonna give me the results I wanted and it was gonna result in twice as fast to me getting my results. That's incorrect. The real work comes when you allow your body to rest, to repair itself. That's where the progress comes in. So when you train once in the day, and then you decide to train the second time, you haven't allowed your body to recover from the first one, so you've rendered that workout ineffective. So what ends up happening is that you've now burnt all these calories, and you get frustrated over time because you don't see twice the results, and then you end up getting fatter. This is a mistake I've made. The only time I can recommend training twice in a day is A, you do maybe a cardio workout in the morning, and you only focus on your cardiovascular workout. You come in the second time in the day, and then you do weightlifting so you can put all your energy into your body. But those are some mistakes that I've made that have made me fatter. Let's go into topic number two. You've been in here for an hour. I'm trying to get to the Olympics, baby. <laughs> I kid. It's a mistake I used to make a lot. It's overdoing cardio. So, spend an hour trying to burn fat, imagining that that's what you need for you to lose all the weight. And in reality, it's a combination of your training, your diet, and your cardio that can get you your desired physique. So what ends up happening to a lot of people, they're doing cardio for an hour, two hours, and they're not seeing the results. You end up getting frustrated, you say forget it, and you end up, you know, binge eating and gaining all the weight back because the cardio isn't doing you justice. My big recommendation is that you start with five minutes in the first week. Second week, you've gone to 10 minutes. Third week, you've gone to 10 minutes with an incline. The week after that, 15 minutes with an incline. And that will allow you to slowly increment the amount of calories you burn using your cardio. So be intelligent about how you use your cardio. And sometimes it can be detrimental to your gains. So rather be smart about it and allow it to be sustainable. But I'm trying to get to the Olympics. So I'm going to see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Last but not least, ask yourself, is your diet sustainable? Is running an hour on the treadmill sustainable? Is training for two hours sustainable? Is eating less than 2,000 calories for the rest of your life sustainable just to have your six-pack abs? You need to ask yourself that because if it isn't, it's highly likely you're going to binge. It's happened to me and it's happened to many people in the fitness industry is that it's not sustainable unless you're taking exogenous drugs. But just to recap, number five was doing so much ab workouts that you don't see your abs. You need to pay attention to your diet and a lot of people get frustrated and end up leaving the gym because they've done so much work and that in the end makes you fat or that happened to me. I kept on working my abs, didn't see progress and I was just like, you know what, forget it, I'm just gonna leave the diet. Number four was your diet, pay attention to it. If you keep on eating the foods that you don't know how many calories are in there, if you keep on putting that salad dressing on your salad thinking you're gonna lose weight but you're eating 400 calories and dressing alone, you're not gonna lose weight, you're actually going to get more weight. Number three was spending too much time in the gym. It's not sustainable. Sometimes going three hours can increase your appetite. At the end of the day, you end up eating more than you had to. Number two is the cardio problem. An hour worth of cardio normally isn't the answer. You need to have a balance within your diet, your training, and your cardio to see results. And ask yourself if it's sustainable. But I hope this was informative, guys. If you did enjoy it, leave it a thumbs up. Subscribe here if you're new. And if you haven't seen the previous, this is the video right here, but I'll see you guys in the next one.